So this is the second video in a series discussing evidence for evolutionary theory. In this particular video, we want to have uh, evidence to support the idea that selection can actually cause the change that we see over generations. And so if we want evidence for that, there are kind of two places we can go. We can first think about artificial selection. I haven't used that term yet. So artificial selection is just anytime we see changes in species because of humans picking particular individuals to reproduce the next generation. So maybe if individuals have particular traits that we like, if we just let them reproduce and then we continue to do that generation after generation, we can create change even more quickly than perhaps natural selection typically does in nature. And so there are several examples of how we've really fundamentally changed plants and animal species uh, with to, for them to have the traits that we like. And so back in Darwin's time, it was sort of a rage uh, for uh, pigeon breeders to partic pr produce particular types of pigeons that people thought were attractive. And so he interviewed pigeon breeders and he sort of learned the idea that by, by only letting certain individuals reproduce with the traits that you like, you can very quickly make all the different types of pigeons that people purchased. Uh, we're a little bit less familiar with pigeons nowadays, but the same principle holds true to all the pets that we now have. Cats, uh, dogs, horses, all selected to have particular attractive traits or attractive behaviors or kind of uh, physical abilities that we like. And we did that by selectively breeding the individuals that had those genetic traits. And so it'd be nice to have a little bit more evidence uh, to directly support that idea that we fashioned these organisms. Uh, before I do that, let me also mention that plants work the same way. We've really fundamentally shifted plants to have the traits that we like as well. Um, so we didn't just find sort of these types of apples out there in nature when we first discovered apples. Uh, we sort of created these plant species and all of the diverse types of apples with their distinct flavors and appearance. Uh, same thing is also true of tomatoes and many other plants um, who produce fruits or vegetables that we then consume. Um, by, by selecting for certain plants, we create all kinds of different varieties of tastes and shapes and colors. So like I said, it would be nice to have kind of a direct example of that. So we're going to have you guys watch a particular video where uh, scientists in Russia, sort of the former Soviet Union as well, when they started the experiment, uh, bred two groups of silver foxes in order to uh, show one group um, they kind of left alone as a control group. Another group they continually selected only the individuals who showed tameness when humans came by. And by selectively breeding um, uh, progressively tamer and tamer and tamer individuals, they were able to uh, show a, a very, very tame group who loved humans as compared to the control group who stayed relatively wild and wary and hostile to humans who kind of came by their cages. And then they wanted to study the genetics of that. Um, and that experiment is continuing to this day, but it's a great example, a direct example of how we've recently created change in an animal species through artificial selection. And so we want to say that the same thing is occurring in nature. Maybe if just uh, certain individuals survive better in nature, then it's nature doing the selecting of those organisms to reproduce. And maybe there are direct examples of that as well, because some field biologists who have very painstakingly and, and patiently taken a lot of data have been able to show this change occurring in nature. And so we're going to have you watch a wonderful video produced by HHMI, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, showing a very famous pair of field biologists, the Grants, who have uh, been studying finches kind of near the Galapagos Islands for many, many years, uh, the same place uh, Darwin also traveled and did his research. And they've been able to kind of uh, study a very small island that they're going to show in this video. And because the island's so small, they were able to kind of count, um, record, take a picture of, and measure traits of many different individual finches for generations on this island. And in particular, there was a case where there was a very severe drought that hit the island that drastically killed off uh, many different plant species. 
that made um, food sources for them. Um, the surviving plants tended to just make these very tough, large seeds that the, bee, the birds needed to be able to break into to eat. And they found that in that particular drought, um, they're going to show this graph in the video and really pay attention to this graph. Um, you'll see that, first of all, many organisms died. Um, so that's why the, the black bar graph um, looks so much smaller. It was still a drought. There was still way less food. So carrying capacity was a lot lower. But also notice that it tended to be the individuals who had larger beaks who were able to kind of break open those larger seeds who survived much better than the organisms who had smaller size beaks. And so they tended to reproduce um, individuals who had larger size beaks and we were, they were actually able to document this kind of differential survival of certain individuals who went on to reproduce. And so they were really able to show kind of a, a, an evolutionary change over just a few generations uh, because anytime you have certain individuals who are selected to reproduce, either by nature, natural selection, or by humans, artificial selection, we can actually see that change occurring.